Hey y'all, you're watching Porty's Garage. Brakes on this old Cadillac aren't the best. That's not something you want to have when you're driving a big heavy boat like this down the road. So, got into it, took it apart. I think what's wrong is the uh, rotor here definitely is not flat. I can feel waves and bumps every time I hit the brakes. But while I'm in here, I started looking around and looks like the upper and lower ball joints, the boots starting to separate. I got some moisture on the bottom of the shocks making me think the shocks are leaking so instead of just brakes this is going to be more of a front end braking and suspension overhaul deal first things first though i want to see if i can get these rotors turned they're very expensive um, to replace so i'm hoping there's enough meat on them left i can get them turned so before i go ahead and buy any parts i'm going to take these off take them to the old o'reilly's and see if we can get them turned so let's check it out we're going to start by removing the slider pins right here this is actually a 3 8 hex bit and it just kind of slides in right in the back. Now, unfortunately for me, these have seen a little bit of salt and they don't want to fit in right. I really don't want to strip this out. So I'm just going to give them a couple taps. That way this uh, socket bit is nice and seated in here. There we go. It's going nowhere. Now, we can take our ratchet and see if we can get them off. Oh yeah, we're gonna need to get some breaker bar action on this thing. And again, since we're dealing with a lot of rust here, these pins are not wanting to come out too well. So no worries, if we had a punch, this would be a little more professional, but this is why we DIY. One pan off, let's get the bottom one here. There we go. Two pins out. Now we should be able to, beautiful. Just tuck this up here for safekeeping. Now, gotta work on removing this hub here. We gotta first get our grease cover off. I'm just gonna take a pretty thin screwdriver here. We're just gonna very delicately start prying this off. Just broke my screwdriver. That's a first. Looks like it's time to test out that Craftsman warranty. There we go. Not a lot of grease in there, but we'll change that. Now, let me grab some paper towels. I'm gonna to clean this up a little bit so we can really see what we're working with. Now we got a good view of our castle nut here holding everything together. First things first, get this cotter pin out of the way. And then, our actual castle nut. The biggest socket I have is 27 millimeter and wouldn't you know it, it's like a glove. It really isn't gonna be too tight either. It's not supposed to be too tight. Let's get this guy out. And then we've got our washer here. And I'm gonna try and take this off without dropping all the bearings. There we go. Now with our hub off, we can ins or remove the outer bearing. We flip it over here. You can see our inner bearing. Take that guy out too. And now our wheel seal here, I'm just gonna take a screwdriver, put it in through the front, and then give her a couple taps that should knock it out. And then clean it up. We'll take this over to the store and see if we can salvage these things. Load it up, ready to go to the parts store. But side note, I am kind of digging the wheelless look of this Fleetwood. If they ever come up with hover car technology, she's getting that treatment. Here's how we're looking post turn. 
actually came out pretty well. A little bit of pitting there on the edge, but nice and smooth. Going to be a whole lot better than it was. Now, got all my parts ordered, just waiting for them to come in. I might as well go ahead and start disassembling this uh, beast here. So that way when I get my parts in, all ready to come together. Let's get started. Now I'm going to start with the tie rod in here. Just got to get this cotter pin out and then it should be an 11 16th nut. All right, looks like this cotter pin's falling apart here. I might just be manhandling this thing out of here. There we go. Now he can, who's your daddy and what does he do? Um, let's move on and get this dust shield out of the way. This is going to be a half inch and there's three bolts. One, two, and three. And one thing else, we've got uh, part of our ABS line clips in up here. So we'll just wrestle that out and then pull the dust shield off. Sway bar end link right here. It's basically just a long bolt that sandwiches the um, sway bar into the lower control arm. So we got a 13 millimeter nut on top and the whole bolt itself is also 13 millimeters. So. get our ratchet set which I might not be able to but that's okay I got my little twirly bob here there we go get the wrench on the bottom here let's see what damage we can cause be a breaker bar situation too. Gotta love old rusted hardware. There we go. Brute force sometimes works. Try not to burn myself alive. There we go. Sway bar end link out. Also going to go ahead and take out the inner tie rod off. This is a three quarter inch bolt. Our nut is right up there. Also going to be taking the ABS sensor out. ABS has been coming on randomly, so I think these have been about past their prime. Just one bolt here, seven millimeter. And if this is anything like the passenger side, I'm going to have to absolutely destroy this sensor to get it out. Is this Spindle here is a little rusty. Oh yeah, that's stuck in there. Here goes nothing. Hey, 
hey, that actually kind of came out. Look at that. And then I've got a couple little spots where it's mounted and then it clips in right up there. So I'll take that out and we'll move on to start getting some of these ball joints off. One last thing before I get the jack in position to take these ball joints off, I want to get the lower shock out here. It's just two 13 millimeters, nothing too crazy. Let's hope they're easier than some of the other bolts on this thing. There's something weird going on with this guy. Ah, interesting. Take a look at this. So you're looking at our bolt right in there. And when we try to loosen it, all it does is spin our bracket round and round and round because that is broken. So, don't really know what I'm gonna have to do with that. Might have to ponder it for a second here. Well, I'm gonna have to get back to that lower shock strut bolt eventually. But in the interest of moving on, let's go ahead and start taking off these ball joints. I do have the jack down here supporting this control arm, so springs don't go flying in my face. Uh, let's go ahead and get this guy. 15 sixteenths, and we got to get the old cotter pin out first. There we go, one down. Now we gotta see about getting this out of the spindle here. So I let a little bit of pressure off the jack. Now I'm gonna give this spindle a couple whacks, see if we can knock it loose. Woo! Now time to go ahead and get the lower ball joint out. But I mean, you can see this has no no, you know, self-reliance at all. Um, turns out I was wrong. This is actually 15 16 This upper one had a different size. And I was reading my chart wrong. Sorry about that, guys. And to go ahead and get this spindle unseated from the ball joint, breaking out the pickle fork here. I'm not too worried about saving this ball joint because it is far gone. So we're just gonna give it hell. There we go, spindle off making trails. Now to get the actual physical ball joint out, what I do is I've got the jack holding the control arm about where the shock and spring is. And this, I'm just gonna have to give it hell.
gotcha. Now the upper ball joint equally as annoying. These are actually riveted in. And there's no easy way to unbolt them. So what I'm gonna do, go from underneath, drill it out, and then take the chisel, chisel at the head, and then take the chisel and try and pop this thing off. And while I'm up here, I can get to the top of the shock. This is pretty far gone. I think I'm just gonna cut that off and then see what we can do about this lower bolt that doesn't wanna go anywhere. Now if I can only figure out this bottom one, we'll be in good business. Um, for now, let's go ahead and do this top ball joint. I'm gonna try and get as close to the center as I can. That way I'm not accidentally biting into my upper control arm. It's kind of difficult without a punch. There's one. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to get to this other one really well. That's not gonna work. Well, that one might just be a force it through. Well, anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other two and then we'll start prying this thing off. And here we go. One, two, three, four. Rivet heads removed. Now, gotta get something in here and pop this off. It's about ready to come through. Maybe you can whack it up. It's just that back left one that's st stuck on. Come on, buddy. You can come out now. There it is. Upper ball joint out too. Got the shock out. All I had to do was grind off the head of the bolt. So got to get a new one of these and I need a new speed clip anyway. So there you go. But now we're looking pretty good. I did leave the caliper on. I'm going to wait to change that when I get the new one. That way I'm not, you know, letting any air or water or anything get into the brake lines, but we're looking pretty good. Nice and disassembled here. And what I am gonna do is go ahead, hit this frame, the control arms and the knuckle we took off with some uh, wire brushes, and then just spray a little rust reformer on. You know, we are got everything this torn apart. Might as well take a couple extra minutes to try and give this thing some nice longevity and extra life. Well, all my parts are in. Let's start getting this thing put back together, back on the road. I'm gonna start off with something easy here, upper ball joint. Instead of riveting anything in, I just got some nuts and bolts here. So let's go ahead and get that thrown on. Now time for the really fun one, lower ball joint. Since this was pressed in, we're gonna have to press the replacement in. So here's the setup. We've got a receiving tube that is wider than the ball joint itself. We're gonna stick that right up on top. And we've got our cap for the receiving tube, which will allow the ball joint to come through. 
we go above that, we've got our inserting thing, whatever this is called. Gonna go underneath the ball joint to help press it up. And then everything, we've got our whole press here to bring it together. The only real issue with this is that I gotta make sure this ball joint's going in nice and straight. If it goes in cockeyed or crooked, never gonna be able to get it in. So let's give it a try and see what kind of damage we can do. Well, sorry about that. I didn't realize the camera wasn't going, but I went ahead and I got the knuckle on. Basically just set it in the lower ball joint, torqued it down to 45, threw our cotter pin in, jacked it up, got it to go in the top, torqued that down to 45 with the cotter pin. I still need to get that in a little bit. But now we're no longer at risk of the spring shooting off and killing me. So let's move on to something next. Now I'm gonna move on here, get the shock put on. If you remember, I had a broken clip down uh, at the bottom shock mount. I ended up getting this off Amazon. Unfortunately, GM used the exact same bolts and nuts from 1955 to 2007. So, made things a little bit easier. Let's go ahead and prepare our shock here by getting our washer and our rubber bushing here. See if we can feed it from down under here. Be a little easier if I jack it up here so I can see what's going on in the front. And just a quick note here, I am leaving the grease fittings off of the ball joints until the very end. That way I don't risk damaging them. Now our shock's held in place. Let's let the jack down just a little bit. There we go, sitting nice and pretty. I'm blanking on the torque specs, but I'll look those up and uh, get her torqued down. We'll move on to the next. The lower shock bolts were 20 foot pounds and the upper shock nut was 97 inch pounds. So I just went ahead and got that nice and tight with the old wrench here, because I don't have a torque wrench that goes that low. Now let's go ahead and work on these sway bar bushings here. So we're gonna install them from the bottom. We get to slide all of our fun stuff on in here. Did get this upside down. There we go. Now we'll pop that in there. Throw on our first rubber bit. And our washer. And our sleeve. Our next washer next rubber bit and this looks like it might be a little bit annoying to do up next ABS sensor I'm gonna go ahead and pop that in here We'll start by putting the sensor in and getting that tightened down. Just send it on through here. And tighten her down. Not gonna go too crazy tight, it is made of plastic. And then what we do, we route it through behind the knuckle underneath the lower ball joint. This right here is gonna to clip to the dust shield when we get that on. And then it 
it's gonna go just under here, around and around, up into the engine bay. So now we can take our little clips we got here, start hooking it on. All right, good thing I checked because I was indeed doing it wrong. So this guy goes right here. It's supposed to go up under here. I might need to loosen this brake thing here. There we go. And then it's gonna grab on right to this rubber bit. There we go. And now our next one, right over here. This grabs right onto that little rubber piece. Go see how things are looking under the hood. Here's a little view from the engine bay. So basically it's this line right here, comes up from underneath, clips into that, keeps going up. Sorry, the camera's kind of hard to get to. You get another clip right here and it comes in and plugs in and is held in this handy little shot. So all done with that. Let's continue our work down here. We can go ahead and get the dust shield on. First, we got a little rubber seal. Gonna go right here, help keep some of the dust off. And slide around in. We've got our three bolts. One up here. One right here. last one right down here. Now moving on to getting this wheel hub back on, get to play with some grease. I went ahead and went with new bearings because you know what, they're cheap enough, why not? And of course we gotta have our new wheel seal. So I'm gonna start by getting some grease in here. Actually, I think first I'm gonna pack the bearings. That way we know we're nice and greased up. Get some grease in here on both sides, put some on the spindle, some of the dust cap, and then we'll go ahead and put this sucker on the car. Let's start, we'll just take a little glob here. Throw it in my palm. And then taking the bottom part, we're just gonna slowly start pushing some grease in. I don't know if you can see it too well, but right there, we can see some red grease starting to poke through the top. That's how we know we're getting enough in there. I'm gonna keep doing this till I got the whole thing nice and saturated. There we go. See grease poking through all sides. Let's try and get some of this off of this onto my hand. Is going to be our inner bearing, the big one here. Set it down, and same thing for our outer bearing, smaller one. All right, looking pretty good. Now let's start packing our bearing here. We're not packing our bearing, our hub. Make sure we're 
nice and greased up. There we go. Maybe a little more. Just for good measure. And we'll take our inner bearing. Drop her right on in. Bam, fits like a glove. Speaking of which, I think I'm gonna lose one of these. And we'll take our wheel seal here. Drop her on and let me grab a hammer so we can tap it in. Make sure we're going in nice and plumb. There we go, ready to get sealed up. There's another dash of grease in here for good measure. All right, let's bring her outside. All right, we'll start by getting a little bit of grease on the spindle here. Now we can take our hub and rotor assembly. slider on there we go now let's take some more grease stuff it in here make sure there's no metal on metal contact now we will take our outer bearing Slide it on in there, looking good. And we're spinning, that's always a good sign. Now we've got our washer here with a little tooth in it. Wanna make sure we line that up. And our castle nut. Take a little bit of this off the tip here. Now what we're gonna do, we got our ratchet with our socket on here. We wanna make sure this is nice and seated in here. We don't wanna go crazy too tight, otherwise, you know, we're gonna have friction as these wheels spin. So what I'm gonna do, first get her nice and tightened up. Now, I'm going to spin this as I start Working it a little tighter. Okay, let's see here. Looking pretty good. Now let's back her off just a touch. Get our cotter pin lined up. I think that's where it goes. No, well, maybe not. It's hard to see now I got all this grease and junk in here. There we go. Now we got our grease cap here. Throw a little bit in there for good measure. A couple taps. Bam! Now, I did clean the back of the rotor before I put it on. I'm gonna clean the front here and we'll start getting the brakes on. Now, on to brakes. First thing we're gonna do, get the soft line off. It's looking like it's a 13 millimeter and we will see if this thing even wants to give at all. Oh, 
Oh, I think I'm tightening it. Maybe that's why. Oh, here we go. It's a thing of beauty. Okay, we're good and loose now. We got a clip right here. That is holding our line in. Wrestle that off. Now we should be able to pull this out. There we go. Now let's take our new soft line. It does have a couple of uh, little notches here. We'll try and line those up. Appears to be like this. There we go. We're going in. I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of this threaded in, put our clip back, and we we'll, should be good to start getting the caliper on. Now, time to get the actual caliper on here. Got our caliper. We're going to throw in the brake pads here. I did put a little bit of grease on them just to try to help anything from squeaking and rattling around. There we go. Now we're gonna go ahead, set her on. Perfect. And now here's why I haven't hooked up our tie rod end yet, so I can move this. Take our same hex bit pins here. Slide them on through. And tighten them down. I, for the life of me, could not find the torque specs on these. So, I'm just going to go ahead and get them good and tight. Last bit here, get the soft brake line on. Sorry, I couldn't really get a good camera angle for you, but trust me, it's back here. What we gotta do, take our nut, or our bolt out, and we'll see we got two copper, I'm guessing these are crush washers here. One of them there, one of them on the inside. We'll take our hose. lined up get our washers in place and there we go brakes are just about done the only thing we're gonna need to do is get them bled what I'm doing for the tie rod ends here, I'm gonna get an alignment, but to make it easy getting there, lining up the old one next to the new one, trying to get the same overall length. Pretty close, I think we're gonna send it. And last but not least, sway bar end lake. These are also getting torqued down to 35 foot pounds. Bam, now I got a couple of cotter pins to put in and we will be all done assembling. Just gotta do some grease work and a little bit of brake bleeding and we'll be ready to rock and roll. And we wanna make sure we get all of our ball joints and stuff greased up here. Whoop, it was not on. There we go. I think we're good. 
let's check and make sure. Oh yeah. Definitely full. I also did forget to tie down this uh, tie rod sleeve here. So we'll get those tightened and get these brakes working again. Well, it looks like my DIY alignment was a little bit off. Both point out we're toward the front a little bit, but hey, fortunately Bell Tire is just down the road and it's all side streets. Woo! We are breaking good now, ladies and gents. And there we have it. This Fleetwood riding like a dream. Stopping on a dime, it's everything I ever wanted out of a luxurious Cadillac. Hey, we got a lot more content like this coming, so if you like what you saw, hit us with a like and subscribe, and I'll catch you later. Peace.